Hello everyone, welcome to the third devlog on Labyrinthophobia. I'm Digital Kingdom Editor, or DKE for short. In this devlog, I'll go over what I've accomplished since the last devlog, and what I'm hoping to achieve by the next devlog. Timestamps are on screen now if you'd like to jump to a particular section in this video. Without further ado, let's get into it. First and foremost, reverb has been added into the maze. I wanted to start delving into some sounds with the game, so I went ahead and got reverb zones working. The reverb zones themselves will have to be adjusted as more is added into the game in order to make the reverb sound a little more realistic and more accurate to the environment. But for now, I'm happy that there is reverb of some sort. Let's take a listen so you can hear this reverb in action. As you may have heard during that clip, there is reverb, but there is also a way for the footstep sound effects to change based on what sort of floor you're walking on. If you're on a wood floor, it will play wood floor footstep effects. When you're on a concrete floor, it will play concrete floor footstep effects. When you're on carpet, it will play carpet footstep sound effects, and so on. If you didn't catch it the first time, I'll play it back for you here. Flickering lights have also been added in order to give the mazes a more creepy vibe and to help the player out a tiny bit so they don't have to fully rely on their flashlight. I've been able to make flickering lights of differing speeds so there can be a nice variety of flickering lights that you'll see throughout the maze. While I haven't fully made two mazes, I did finish one and it's a backrooms theme level because I really enjoy the backrooms. Shout out to Digital Kingdom for having me design this level and I think we both did a pretty good job putting it together. We can take a quick tour around the backroom so you can see what I envisioned for it. With the mazes, I also managed to get the random maze selector going. As you can see, each time I start up the game, it will choose either the backrooms maze or the unfinished maze that I have. So this is working quite well and most likely the way I'll be going with this game. It's possible that I may be able to figure out how to do procedurally generated mazes, but I think for the start of mazes, I think the system is good for now. What I'm really excited to show you is the enemies and what I've done for them so far. They still need to be worked on as they cannot do anything when they catch up to the player, but they can do a good variety of things. The first enemy type is one I'm calling a parasite, and it's a very deformed humanoid enemy that will wander and patrol the maze. Upon seeing a player, it will scream at the player and begin running towards them. I would like to add functionality to be able to kill the parasite, but for now, you just want to run away from them if you see it. So, if the player runs away and hides successfully, the parasite will lose interest and give up trying to find the player and begin wandering around the maze again. The second enemy type that I have is Weeping Angel. And if you watch Doctor Who or played any games that have something similar to that effect, you already know what I'm talking about. The Weeping Angel is a statue of an angel that will move on its own and will always move towards the player. The only time that the statue is not a threat is when the statue is being looked at. When the statue has a player that is looking directly at it, it cannot move, but once the player takes the eyes off their statue, it has the freedom to move again. It's a dangerous enemy that cannot be killed, so you have to be careful about how you approach it when wandering the mazes. I want to add in more enemy types, but for now, I think this is a good start. I've also got a way to randomly spawn in different enemy types. Spawn points will be placed around each maze, and a random enemy type will be spawned at each of these points. On screen, you can see that it's randomly selecting between the parasite and the weeping angel, so you never truly know what enemies you'll be up against in the mazes. I've done a lot for this devlog, so let's wrap it up by explaining what I want to do by the next devlog. Stamina bar improvement. I want the stamina bar to look better, so I'll probably mess around with some UI's designs in order to make it look better. Footstep bug. When you hold down the shift key and run, your footsteps also get faster, but what ends up happening is when you keep holding down the shift key even after losing all your stamina, the footsteps sound like you're still running, and this is not accurate. I'd like to try to fix this bug if possible just so I don't have to worry about it down the line. Enemies catching the player. There is currently no functionality for anything to happen when an enemy catches a player. I'm going to try to change that, and I think for this kind of game, I want it to be an instant death if you get caught by an enemy, so some kind of animation will occur and a game over screen will appear. One final thing before we end off today's devlog. I want to give a big shout out to Aaron Mental Studios and Matt Asplund. Both are YouTubers who provide excellent Unreal Engine tutorial videos, and without their videos to help me out with this project, I don't think Labyrinthophobia would even be possible. Thank you to you both, and keep up the great work, because you two are the sole reason why this game is even able to get off the ground in the first place. Another devlog done for Labyrinthophobia. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on all things with Labyrinthophobia. My name is Digital Kingdom Editor, DKE for short, and I'll see you in the next one.